So this morning, Kenny and I have maybe a not so fast thought, but we do, um, we are reacting to uh, a few things. So, so when we saw an article from uh, someone in the industry who kind of talked about how rising well, the grocer last week, right? What's that? Yeah, yeah, it was in Canadian grocer, and um, yeah. it, it really was about rising food costs and how we may need to think about, you know, capping or freezing costs for now. Um, and then I think we're also reacting because we've we've just seen the NDP kind of call for an inquiry on, you know, um, retailer profits and and um, and and uh, rising costs as well. Um, and I guess the I guess the the part for us that I guess we want to be able to shine some light on um, and, and, you know, obviously we want people's feedback is, you know, what's happening in the, in the marketplace right now, there are a lot of supply chain issues. There's a lot of shortages. There's kind of lots going on, but anytime that you ask for, I guess we were confused because particularly with the article last week that called for freeze in pricing, to us, I guess being industry insiders, we look at this and, and look at it and and think, you know, nothing's ever free. Um, and so you can freeze, you can't easily freeze pricing. Um, and if you did, it doesn't stop rising costs. Um, and, and I guess our gut response was, well, who pays for that? Um, you know, is is the gut response? Did I, did I kind of summarize that right? Kenny? I think I think it's exactly. I think the disconnect was <clears throat> the implication of the article basically was that there's a perception for consumers, mostly driven by media and, quite frankly, probably others, but saying that the greedflation, I think, is was what it was called, mm -hmm. is driven by retailers wanting um, more margins, mm -hmm. right? Or and that's why the prices have gone up because they're making more money. Now, to some degree, that could be true. Maybe they've increased their prices more than they've had to or should have. I don't really care. It, I don't understand what world we live in where people cannot watch three seconds of any news, whether you agree with news or not. Gas has gone up. Every mm -hmm. raw material on the planet has gone up. Every shipping rate has gone up. All of it. So the whole back end before it hits retail has gone up astronomically. You and I know I play in distribution. I play in importation. Mm -hmm. I own brands. I now have the retailer. I can see all the price issues that are there, right? But the article basically implied that, you know, like a, a company like Loblaws or a Sobeys or a Save on Foods would basically just freeze prices for the next three to six months so the consumers would get a break and everybody would chill out. And Phil and I read that and thought, yeah, I mean, you can definitely do that. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not – the consumer's not going to pay not for that. Free. It's I think that's, not free. The I think that's the big thing is <clears throat> the suppliers, everyone says the suppliers this are going to an pay. altruistic thing, right? Is that like, we'll just freeze it and everything will be it doesn't fine. Work. Everything is not fine. It doesn't right? work. Like who pays for that? Like, is it, is it a, is it the brand who's going to pay for that? You know, at, at what point, you know, does the retailer and the brand hold hands and they, and they share a cut? The problem um, is that, that relationship you know, does not exist in our country for correct, the most part. It yeah. might exist. You know, now that I'm back in retail, I'm listing items right now and I'm looking at, so we've been closed for the month and a half, right? And I'm looking at pricing with probably six months old on some SKUs that they've stopped ordering. The person who owned for me more stopped ordering six, eight months ago. And I'm seeing increases literally on cost of anywhere between 20 and 50% on some items. It's ridiculous. But you know what? What are you going to do? So I look at it. I type in the new cost. I type in a new retail based on the margin I need to remain profitable so that I can pay my employees so that I can continue to shop as a consumer and support the yeah. Canadian economy because I can't, I can't be a charity. Having said that, I'm also working hard as a small independent trying to grab those deals, trying to see if someone will give me a break on something. Maybe someone's got some a little bit older inventory that they bought it a little bit better and mm -hmm. willing to move it out so that I'm trying to then pass it on to my consumer. Big companies can't do that, and quite frankly, won't do that for the most part. Not to make the big companies; these are not animals. They pe there's people who work at Loblaws who are consumers, like all of us who are on listening. That we're all consumers. We all feel it, but you've got to put it in context and perspective. We're, you can't we're, just 
pre price. I, I want to be year. fair too because we're we're generally as a general rule, you and I are are fairly rough on big retailers, and we know that it's not a big um, retailer issue right now. It's we know not. that we know that with um, you know the CEO of Sobeys, he was he was pretty frustrated with what he called kind of armchair um, coaching on pricing and retails. And so, like in all fairness, I think the things that you don't see in the background, right, is um yes we we won't give them a, a free ride they they're still you know retailers are fairly rough on on brand still um you know they're, they're gonna but the flip side is you know like these big grocers they have shareholders they need to report to they have expectations to meet no, they the are they taking thousands of stores and and they are and they and they have employees they have to look after exactly. and they also have and they also have like what you don't see in the background is where buyers can and will take haircuts to try and help, you know, hold the line on things. Right. But they also have this job of like policing, almost policing, which brands are being fair about pre price increases, which brands are not being fair about price increases. There's, there's kind of, I guess the point is there's a lot going on in the background there's um, way we, more than just saying, hey, we should look at the yeah, price seat really not and that see simple. what's going on. It's not that simple. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, again, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sure that in everything in life, anytime there's an opportunity to make more, someone's going to try mm -hmm. to make more. Mm -hmm. I see it on all sides. Like if there's vertical integration on anything right now on this call, I can be vertically integrated. I, I go right from importation to the end retail. I can see it. It's there. Right? That's it's let's, maybe um, easier let's switch for me gears for a minute. That's it. Let, let's switch gears for a minute. So if you so retail industry insiders, what what can you give what for consumers is good advice, right? Because all of this is fine and dandy, but the outside consumer who has, you know, the person who has nothing to do with retail, my mom, right? Your mom, my mom. she would go, my I'm mom crap about any back. of that stuff. What I know is I'm paying three, four dollars more for some items that I really need. Exactly. So what do I do here? So to me, my mom is going to have to go back to what my mom's always done or probably mm -hmm. done, maybe slow down, is you have to shop better. Yeah. You may have to look at flyer shopping. Yeah. To be honest with you, and you know, not because I'm an independent now, like, or, but I think you should go back to your neighborhood. Yeah. Your neighborhood well, grocers run on a whole different margin yeah. structure than large retail. And a lot of it's because they're either work in their own stores Typically, they're embedded in the community, so they're much more cautious because they'll hear it right away. And they and they, I think they actually end up feeling bad. Like, I know that sounds stupid, but they actually feel it because they're part of that community. The kids and husbands mm -hmm. and wives work in their stores, in their neighborhoods. I, I think so to me, I, so I would shop a little more independent and shop better. And, and I think to that point, though, I think the other part of shop local is, you know, one of the rising costs is freight. Right. Freight, and so freight close is a really big cost. Right. And right. so if you shop local or you go somewhere where they're sourcing local products, or trying what to. you're probably going to do is save a bit on some of that freight cost. Right. So if it's not coming from far away, you know, they can get it local. Perhaps <laughs> the cost is going to be a little bit lower. That to you as a consumer is going to be something you can look after. I was thinking about the other one is, um, you know, also shopping, you're right, like you talked about, like being price sensitive and kind of shopping where the deals are. I think the other one might be looking at, um, you know, your local guys and and folks that like brands that also might be able to offer you bundles online as well. Well, totally. There's a lot of that. Yeah. There's a yeah, lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think you know, so being able to buy bulk and then being able to right. shave your kind of per unit, you, you, in some senses, a consumer is going to have to do that. You're going to have to do some per unit cost. You're going to have to own some of this, though. As a consumer, yeah. we're going to have to own some of this in that is all these articles and these these great government things are typically, I hate to say it, in essence, bullshit because you're just trying to figure out a way to spin a story or grab media. Mm -hmm. The reality is it's here. Mm -hmm. I think we need to now as consumers take it upon ourselves. And I have to do a little bit more work. If I'm, if I'm starting to worry about the pennies, I have to shop differently. Mm -hmm. I have to cut things out. I hate to say it. I mean, it's just, it mm -hmm. sucks right now. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. seriously, Phil, you should see the price increases that, that I'm playing with. It's really like, Jesus, yeah. how the hell did that happen? But it's, you know what? I know how it is. I look yeah. at it and think, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know. 
So that's our our fast thought for the day. If you if you uh, have something to chime in, this I is, this is a pretty, I love to hear what other people think. Yeah, we we'd love to hear, but this is a pretty active topic. So more to come on this. Thanks. Thank you.